The equation for the production of ammonia in the harbour process is shown here. We've got nitrogen reacting with hydrogen and then we're shown that this is a reversible reaction and we're producing ammonia. We're told that the forward reaction is exothermic. The conditions are a temperature of 450 degrees C, a pressure of 200 atmospheres and the presence of the iron catalyst. We've been asked to explain why these conditions, those ones mentioned above, are chosen for economical production of ammonia in the harbour process. You should include references to the rate of reaction and the position of equilibrium. When you're asked a question like this, it's really important to make sure you know what the question is asking you to do. We have to mention all three of these conditions. We have to talk about both the rate of reaction and the position of equilibrium. And we've been told that we're looking for economical production of ammonia, which means we also need to mention cost. As is really common with equilibria and Le Chatelier's principle related questions, it's also a good idea to have the idea of compromise in mind to support what we're saying. That's a lot of things to keep track of when you're answering this question. So I recommend that you sketch some kind of table a little bit like this, and it can always look like this with the conditions down the left hand side and then the features of the reaction along the top. And then you can just tick off once you've mentioned how one of these conditions affects the feature that you're discussing in your answer. And you can make sure that you don't miss anything out. It's worth noting that the command word in this question was to explain, and that means that we need to develop our ideas and not just make a simple statement about something. So my advice when you're answering this question as well is to take one condition at a time. So I'm going to tackle everything to do with temperature that I can think of. So first of all, we need to state that a higher temperature will give a higher rate of reaction because there will be more frequent successful collisions. I really recommend using comparative language in evaluation type questions like this. And then we need to move on to talk about equilibrium. A higher temperature is going to shift the position of equilibrium to the left hand side. And we can tell that that's the case because the forward reaction is exothermic. And what's gone unspoken here is that therefore the reverse reaction will be endothermic. So if we raise the temperature, equilibrium is going to shift in the endothermic direction, which is left. And then in terms of a compromise, then we're talking about this being a compromise between the rate of reaction and the position of equilibrium. Additionally, if we're trying to reach higher temperatures, that will use more energy. And so therefore that will increase costs. And so you could also say that the temperature that we choose is a compromise between the rate of reaction and cost. So we've said more than enough about temperature there. Let's move on to pressure. A higher pressure will give a higher rate of reaction because there will be more frequent successful collisions. This is the same concept as the temperature. Now, the equilibrium position, though, will be the opposite. And that's because there are four molecules on the left hand side of the equation, but only two on the right hand side of the equation. So therefore, a higher pressure is going to shift the position of equilibrium to the right hand side because there are more molecules on the left hand side. And so it seems like a high pressure is great in terms of the rate of reaction and in terms of the equilibrium position and therefore the yield of ammonia that we produce. However, a higher pressure will require more energy and that will therefore increase the costs. And a higher pressure will also require a stronger reaction vessel in order to withstand that high pressure. So that will increase the costs as well. And so the compromise on this occasion for pressure is between the rate and the yield, both being high, without setting the costs being too high. And so it's a compromise between rate and cost. And then if we consider the catalyst, we know that catalysts, when we use them, we get a higher rate of reaction because the activation energy is lowered. And that's by providing an alternative reaction pathway. And so because of that, this will mean that we will be reducing energy costs potentially because we don't need to use such high temperatures to get a fast rate of reaction. 
And then in terms of equilibrium, when we use a catalyst, this has no effect on the position of equilibrium because a catalyst will lower the activation energy of the forward reaction and the reverse reaction precisely the same amount. And so we're not going to affect the position of equilibrium by employing a catalyst. At most, we might affect the speed at which we we reach that position of equilibrium, not what the position actually is. And so you can see here I've made quite a few separate points that I've marked as bullet points. I've absolutely hit every condition and I've hit every aspect of every condition. In reality, you probably wouldn't need to say all of these bullet points to get all six of those marks. What I would say is that you need to mention the temperature and the pressure and the catalyst. You need to mention the rate and the equilibrium and the cost, and I would recommend compromise as well. And you probably don't need to have a tick in every single row for temperature and pressure and catalyst. You just need to make sure you've got ticks in each row and ticks in each column. And absolutely that you've mentioned cost because they've asked us about the economic production of ammonia.